Congratulations, you've made it to the interview stage of the postdoc of your dreams in the lab where you want to be with the PI, you want to be at the university in the city that you want to be. So now you got to realize that many of the people that are going to be invited for this interview will have very similar skills and qualifications. And so therefore, this interview is going to be actually quite important in determining who will get hired. So I'm going to go over some uh, general points and then also some specific questions as examples uh, to help you master your postdoc interview. And we're starting right now. The details now, of course, depend a lot on what kind of situation, what kind of a position it is. Is it a fellowship? Is it a grant funded postdoc position? Is it more like an open position? Is it a position that also entails teaching? Well, the most common case is going to be grant funded positions for postdocs, at least in our case. So I will mostly focus on those, but things really will not be that different if the situation is slightly different. And also the situation will not be radically different if you're interviewing for a PhD position either. So first of all, four general points for how to basically act during the interview. The first one is keep your answers concise and to the point. Don't ramble on forever. It's fine to first think a little bit about the question. I mean, not half a minute, but you know, collect your thoughts but then deliver a, a well-formulated answer. Don't drone on forever. Nobody is that interesting that they can keep on talking and not lose interest on the other side. So keep your answers short and precise and to the point. This is the first general point. If you weren't quite sure what a question meant, then it's completely fine to ask, did I understand it correctly that you meant like this experience with statistics, let's say, or this experience with um, high throughput sequencing? So if you were not quite sure what the question really meant or what the background is or what they were really getting at, rather than rambling on randomly, um, just ask specifically what the point was. Third point, even though um, the situation can seem very relaxed, very laid back. We, for example, try to have always a very friendly atmosphere during the interview. Um, make no mistake, you are being watched at every single moment during this interview is a fact, right? Because we try to also find out what is your personality not just what are your qualifications, because a lot of the qualifications will be already evident from your CV. And that's why you were selected in the first place. So now it's very important to figure out, you know, are you a good team player? What would it be like to work with you? Are you funny or whatever? I mean, whatever is of importance to the lab that hires you, your personality traits. So even when there are questions that are, you know, they seem like they're just for entertainment purposes, they are not. I mean, everything in the interview pretty much has a purpose. Uh, so make sure you basically don't let your guard down during the interview, right? And um, yeah, take it seriously and stay, stay focused. The fourth point is do your research on the place. Nothing is worse <laughs> than like you don't even know what the exact project description was from the ad or if there was an information additional information given in the ad, like a link to a project website. If you didn't visit it and it will become obvious, it will just reflect very badly on you right from the very beginning. And so try to avoid that. Nothing is worse than a very ill-informed um, candidate, basically. So don't do that. Spend the extra 10, 15 minutes to find out about the place. Um, find out about the lab, find out what they've recently published. This is time well spent if you want that position. Well, now some common questions and examples of questions that, for example, we have asked. The most common one is please summarize your PhD or if you're interviewing for a PhD, your master's research in just a few sentences, usually giving a time limit of like two minutes or something like this. And so you know, you should be prepared for that one as an obvious, obvious question to ask you at this stage. And the aim of that question is, can you really put your work in context? Or do you just ramble on forever, right? I mean, we've had all of these. Or can you very concisely state what was the importance of what you did, what you find, and how it fits into the 
bigger body of literature or research on this topic. This is what we're looking for. Um, can you basically place your research in context? Do you know what hypotheses you have asked and what your results really mean? So be prepared with that statement. Well, the second obvious question that virtually anybody will ask is you, why do you want to come here? Or why do you want to particularly work in this job? And then, of course, you should know about this job and you should know about the lab, what they're interested in. Um, otherwise, you know, if you don't know why you're coming here, why should we hire you? So I think this is also an obvious question to be prepared for. Make sure you make it as specific to the situation as possible, not just general stuff from your perspective, but also what uh, specifically you makes you a good candidate for this particular position. And the other obvious question connected to that is what are your, uh, what would you bring to the table? What can you really contribute? And there it's also important to say, well, I have, I see your project is about this and that, and I have already experience with this, and therefore I can bring this entire skill set uh, to help with this project, or I know the statistical method, and I think you will be needing it because of such and such. And the more thought you put into this, you know, from the perspective of the interviewer, uh, this person has already thought about how they could really contribute to our lab and how they would fit in. It shows that they are well informed and have, they have also taken the next step to think about what they can really specifically contribute to this project or lab. A very often um, questions are asked that are specific to the postdoctoral position, like what is your experience with bioinformatics or what is your experience with high throughput sequencing? Then it's very important, especially if this thing that you're being asked about um, has many, many, many different steps, that you say, well, you know, in terms of high throughput sequencing, I've done the entire thing from extracting DNA to doing PCRs to uh, sending it out for sequencing to getting the uh, sequences back to doing the bioinformatics with this and this pipeline and that and that R package all the way to the data can then be used for multivariate statistics. And so be as <laughs> detailed and specific about your skills. Don't say, ah, oh, well, I'm very good with high throughput sequencing. And uh, so, you know, make it very specific in this case. And if you're not sure the level of specificity that is required, you know, then just ask the interviewee, as we said before, the interviewer, as we said before, um, what exactly do you mean? Do you mean like which of the steps I've done myself versus what a company did or whatever? So, you know, be very specific about what you can do. State which R packages that you have used, for example, if they ask you how good are you with statistics, they're like, oh, I'm very good with statistics. Say like, I've used R and I've used this package and that package and that package for this purpose and this paper. So be very specific when the question is about methods, about what it really is that you did yourself and the level of command of basically these different skills that you have. Another question is like, where do you see yourself in five years? So this can be asked for a PhD or can be asked for a postdoc. And we're just trying to find out what, what would you like to do later on? Do you plan a career in academia? Do you see yourself as somebody who is a PI who writes their own proposal? What is your level of ambition? Um, so just give the answer. That's an honest answer, of course. Uh, where do you see yourself in a couple of years after this appointment, for example, is over? What is your longer term perspective in the sciences? The classic in the end is like, of course, do you have any questions of us? This will always be asked. Now, don't say, I don't have any questions. <laughs> Um, because it means, well, you're not that interested, right? It's the signal that you are sending. Don't think about like you're bothering them with questions. Of course, don't go overboard with asking like a huge list of questions. Don't do that. Just come prepared with like some things that are really important to you that are related to this job. Um, I don't know, it could be anything. It's like, will I be able to um, also mentor undergrad students or PhD students or something like this? Don't ask super specific questions like about the starting date or anything like this. This is the stuff that you talk about and negotiate for the most part after you've been made the offer. So I think this is also very important to keep straight. During the interview, it's not the place to answer all the questions that you have. Just signal that you are um, interested in this position by asking a well-informed, good question about this, at, at best about the science that you are supposed to do 
but then leave out all the detail like uh, what visa will I need and whatever. So this is, this is not the right place to ask these kinds of questions. So come prepared with a bunch of pertinent questions for the science, not about like the administrative detail or things like that. And of course, ask something positive, right? Don't ask something negative. I don't know what would be <laughs> examples of that. I'm sure we've had some of those in the past, but you know, or I've heard the weather in Germany is terrible. Will I be able to deal with it? Or I don't know. <laughs> you know, ask something that's positive. So because this is the last thing from the interview, it um, creates sort of the the final impression uh, from that conversation. It's like, oh, the final the final impression from that conversation. You want to be something positive, and you want to have it signal your interest in the science and this position. And that's it. As I said, I think this will be um, probably relevant not only for postdocs, but also for PhD students with probably a slightly different focus. And I hope it will be useful to you. Good luck with getting the postdoc of your dreams. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.